bless the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Why we're here today because God has been good to us. We bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus. Keep me true.
you know, the Spirit has revealed it to me that our attention span is, is, is it's difficult to keep our attention. And I've seen that more and more now with the online classes, with the children at home, and I have with David. And I'm seeing that with the mass, the, the multitude of different social media options that we have, and the teachers can identify what I'm saying. It's difficult to keep the children's attention. And even as our moderator comes, I'm praying that the Spirit will keep you focused, that the Spirit will lead you as He leads you. Amen? Yes. So, Brother Gordon will be moderating and leading the service. And coming to us with the word is Deacon Williams, who is no stranger to us, one of our own as well, that will be bringing the word to us. And we're praying that the Lord will use in a mighty way. Mighty way. It's no easy task to, to come up here, whether it is to, to minister in song, to, to be speaking or moderating one way or form. It's no easy task. And we are praying that the Lord will intervene, that He will use Him as a vessel to bring the words to you. Words that will help you as you go through the week on your jobs. You know, I know that it's no easy task on your job to know. You are cutting staff everywhere. And persons are having a hard time coping. You know, even as we come here, we sing and, and we, we know that persons are challenged by the economic times. So we need a word from God, we need a word of encouragement, something that will only be for our spirits. Amen? Amen? So we're praying that as Deacon um, Williams comes to us with the word that we will fall on the fertile word and take root in our hearts and that it will allow us to have a song of praise and joy as we go about ministering to others by our connection to God through the word that we're here today. And so without further ado, I will hand over to Brother God, accepting in the name of Jesus. St. John 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go, and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, dear you may be also. Bless the name of Jesus, standing on the promises. Glory to God. Let's shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is truly amazing. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all that he has done for me, it makes me want to go all the way. Glory to God. I greet our ministers among us, all the men and women of God, little children, visiting friends, accept greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. I am happy to be in the presence of God once more in the congregation of Brayton. Uh, God has been keeping me and I am very much grateful. Glory to God. As the icon has highlighted what today's service, give you a preview of what today's service will be like, the various persons that will be playing various roles in today's service, I ask that you pray for our strength because with all the help of God, we are nothing. So, prayers up as you do service for Almighty God. Amen. I will be asking, uh, I know that there are times um, persons come in the congregation and uh, come with the mindset wanting to do something, but there are times the opportunity is not provided, there are times you are not called. Uh, so, if there is someone who want to volunteer to do something today, I will give you the opportunity to read the scripture for the day. We already have somebody outline um, line out for the songs. So if there is a volunteer who wants to do the scripture, the opportunity will be yours. The scripture reading will come to us from uh, 1 Peter 1. 
Second Peter 1, yes, sorry, Second Peter 1, 1 to 11. So if there's a volunteer who wants to read the scripture, the opportunity. Our service will stand and will sing from our worshiping song number 248, Standing on the Promises. First and to say, standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages where His praises ring, glory in the eyes I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. The persons with the melodious voices will ask you to help with the song.
we'll have Steve Khan Hamilton to come forward and open us in prayer. Your people, 
He asked the Lord that he will wait, oh Lord, until this change come. Oh Lord, he has been through so much. Oh Lord, and continue to go through so much. But oh Lord, we are thankful that it's not about him, but it's about you. So we give you all the glory. Oh Lord, receive you, oh Lord, as you will continue to be with us. Grant, oh Lord, your worship and your praise to us, oh Lord, that we will return it to you. These are all the verses we ask as we look to you and tell your thanks. In the name of your Son, precious, oh Lord. Amen. 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 Glory to God. We thank His promises. What every promise He will do. And we realize that Jesus came that you and I could be a part of the promises of God. Jesus say He has gone to prepare a place. And if He nor forsake us. Bless the name of Jesus. He promised to protect us in our going out and in our faithful. So we thank God for allowing us to be a part of his promise. Bless the name of Jesus. At this moment we'll have a scripture reading. Is there a volunteer for the scripture reading? Someone who was burning to do something this afternoon. The opportunity is yours. Okay, we have a volunteer. Sister Murray. in your knowledge 
of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble without with an appointment. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Thank you, Sister Murray, for reading the scripture reading so wonderfully for us. And I pray that God will continue to bless your soul, that you will continue to do service for him. Glory to God. At this moment, Sister D. Brown will be coming to us with a song for the collection of the Thailand offering. Sister D. Brown. Worship the Lord. We magnify the name of Jesus. You know, brethren, as we continue to face the struggles, the testing, the trials, the suffering in such a time as this, I'm here to encourage us, our brethren, that we should not worry and we should not be afraid. Why? Because we have a livelihood, and that hope is in King Jesus. Praise God. I hope that I try to sing these songs. It will be a blessing, blessing to my souls. You know, I was asked to do a song from last week. The song that I prepared for. 3.36 this morning, this song woke me up. There is not a that God can't Master. 
bless the Lord. There is not one broken vessel that God cannot be. We bless the Lord. Glory to God. We thank Sister Nero for such a wonderful song. Continue to sing for the Lord. And uh, I know that everyone has been blessed from that song. And uh, I just want us to continue to meditate on God Almighty because He has great things in store for you and I. Glory to God. Hallelujah. At this moment, Sister Wilson will come with her song. And uh, after this, the speaker, the Colonel Williams, will come with the word. So I ask that you give your full attention. Be attentive to the words of God. That was different. God wants to say to you today. You will hear what silver blessing He has in store for you. You will receive. Before Sister Wilson come, and they have seen Sister Mary Jesus and give God thanks for the offering that has been collected. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, our friend, we worship and adore your holy name. We praise you, Lord, from whom all blessings flow. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we give you glory and honor because you have given us the strength, you have given us the mind, you have given us the ability and the capability, Lord, to go out to work and to bring back into your course Lord, the blessings from our labor. We thank you, Lord, for the free will offering. We thank you for the tenth of our earnings. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for even uh, everything that was placed in the basket. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you pronounce a spe special blessing upon it and a special blessing upon even those who had to give. Lord, we pray, Lord, that those who didn't at this time Lord, will so be able to work into your vineyard so that they too will not found wanting or lacking in any good thing. Lord, thank you again for the offering. We pray that for those who will use it, we use it to the furtherance of your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray and tell you thanks. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Merini, for praying for the dead and all things. Sister Wilson will now give us her song.
Yes, the Lord.
there was a army that came up against Jehoshaphat. And they came up with all kinds of weapons. And God told Jehoshaphat to get the musicians, get the singers, get the trumpets, the rams horn. Because you are prepared for battle. But that sounds kind of foolish. People come to you with swords and all kinds of different instruments. And God is saying to you, get instruments of praise. You're not going to church. You're not going into the sanctuary. You're going to the battlefield. <laughs> Amen. But God knows how to do it. And when the enemy approached the armies of Israel, God said to Joseph, what are Speak to the musician, let them start playing and singing and dancing and glorify God. You know what I'm at the end of it? The enemies that turn on each other and begin to cut themselves to pieces. So when we talk about praise in church, it's no joke thing. There are some prevailing situations in some of us today. Hallelujah. Some bondage. And priests can broke them bandage there. Amen. Amen. Come on. Priests can break all those bandage. Come on. Priests can break. There are some fears that is going around now, gripping people, fear of death, let dying leave your kids because of the pandemic. Praise and worship and honor can break. Hallelujah. God didn't give any of us the spirit of fear. Fear is a learned thing, a learned behavior. Amen. We learn that from when we're young, when we're baby and grow Everything we stretch after like fire and iron, you'll get a little tap on your arm. So you become fearful. You don't touch that anymore. It goes on that way. Amen. But God did not give us fear. Power He gave us. Love and He gave us sound mind. So I want our minds to be sound today. I don't want us to be wandering all over the place with our minds. Remember, you are sitting in the presence of a holy God. Am I right? Oh gosh, I'm alone. I am alone. I am alone. My God, why did you invite me to be alone? You're sitting in the presence of a divine God. Yeah. And anything possible can happen. Right, Sister Becky? Right, Sister Becky? Anything possible can happen because you're in the presence of a holy God. We have already read the text from 2 Peter chapter 1. And I take my time to kind of encourage our hearts to... While I was doing this, I, I just sense the fear of what is happening around us and the heart and the, art and the lives of people. I, I don't know. People just become fearful, all Christians. Just like Deacon Homa talks about Elijah just called on fire from heaven and consumed prophet. And shortly after, one little lady by the name of Jezebel sent out one threat. And the man become confused and start fear. Run and he went and he hid. I don't want to know that we are doing that. We serve a great, big, wonderful God. Yeah. And if you mean that pandemic of catch us, make sure you're so ready. You have spent many years in this church and otherwise. Yeah. Where will your soul be on that day when Jesus returns? Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Don't be fearful. Yeah. Because it's appointed to man wants to die. Yeah. We're both dead. Yeah. I had a wife that I cherished so much. I love her. She died and gone. I see me the same way. We're both dead. We don't panic over it or worry over it. And we're not. Because it must happen. It is the same God who make life. It's the same God who create death. Amen. The scripture said that. 
But one of the things I recognize with us as Christians that we have never been prepared for them. Never ever. And the world at large. Even though we sing this song, I want to go to heaven and rest. I'm tired of staying down here. I'm tired of the troubles and the trials. But we don't want to die. Am I right? Yeah, we don't want to. But the reality is that one day we must die. We got to die. So don't I love what is happening in the world today to sweep you off your feet. It don't worth it. It must happen. It got to go through. If 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 God don't have mercy, and I have no smart to suggest that it's God allowing it. Because if God wanted to do something about it, he would. Am I right? Yeah, yeah man. He would. So it's a it's a kind of wake up call for the world. So we can understand ourselves and get ready and ship up. Yeah, you know what is true? This is just the beginning. This is like a rehearsal. Great eyes coming that is with marvel hearts. Yeah. We've been talking in the church several years ago about perilous times. We just fall on perilous times. Difficult and hard times. That's what perilous means. Challenging. But let me hope that it's not sweeping any of your feet or causing you to be distracted. Alright? So, as I said before, Peter, 1 Peter, 2 Peter 1, he declared himself to be a servant of God in writing to his believers or his congregation or audience. And he also declared himself in verse 1, pastor. Not just a mere apostle, but an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he, he speaks about how he has obtained precious faith. Now the part that I want to zero in on in this particular verse is that this faith that he has received is about it doesn't come normally. He said it comes through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Turn your mind with me, man, and let us reason. Second Peter chapter 1. And let us reason. Let us look into it together. And if may I tell, if I'm saying something that is not in it, you can just say, oh, I'm going to stop, okay? <laughs> Amen? Well, I want you to follow, please. Are you able to do that? Yeah, yeah man. Let's, let's do this together. And so, he, he speaks to the fact that he obtained like precious faith with, with us through righteousness. This faith comes through righteousness of God and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, fine. And he also further greet the saints by saying, Grace and peace be multiplied. We just sang the song a while ago that we hope for what? What we hope for? Grace. More grace. So he was saying, Grace and peace be multiplied. And how this grace come about is true knowledge. Through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at verse 3. According as his divine power are given unto us all things. I'm reading from the traditional King James. Now, why do we fear? And God's divine power has given us all things. Do you see that in the text? All things that pertain to life. And not only life, godliness. Now, God didn't make a mistake when he did this. He knew that while we are on earth, we'll be needing we become needful of all kinds of different things. So he makes sure that he prepares that for us. Everything. I mean, the very bread that we breathe, it is God who provides it. You believe that? The food that we eat, and some of us overeat ourselves sometimes, is God's providence. Ah. Even the 
very sad to hear where it now. It is God's provided. God who provided for us. So we can come and sit under these fans and enjoy the word of the Lord. Our feast on the word of the Lord. So Peter was making it known to his readers that God has provided everything. You see why I say you're not to be worried about anything around you? Worries of the devil, you know? Because if God provides everything for us, why do we need to worry? What we need is the knowledge and the understanding to tap into the resources. That's what we need. But sometimes worry has ended us from doing that. Because the first line of defense that comes to us most then is worry. And we follow it. We're good warriors. Amen? Some of us are not good warriors at all. We're good warriors. Yeah. And so, having all of that knowledge, he said he has provided things pertaining to godliness as well. Not just life, but to godliness. So we should seek now as to how to serve him in this, in a balanced way. So we can be part of the promises that he has promised. Are per se standing on his promises, like you are for your team. Let's look a little further in the text and examine what he says here. In verse 4, he said, Whereby we are given, whereby are given unto us, touch yourself and say, us. He has given unto us great, exceeding great promises that by these you might be partaker of what? His divine nature. What a loving and kind God. Let me see. Who wants to see right now and this kind of promise that he, he has given to us? Right? Because we're talking about standing on his promises. Now when you recognize that we could not make it all by ourselves after the fall of Adam. So he has provided Jesus Christ to give himself as a sacrificial lamb to bring us into good standing with him. Amen? Amen. And after he has done that, he is the one who sits and, as the Bible teaches on the right hand side of God, making intercessions for us. But a loving and kind God. And we still go around worrying because we, it seems to me like sometimes we forget who we are in him and what he has done. Yes. Okay, so this is a man who was and I'm referring to Peter now who, who was at Jesus' side while he was on earth. Jesus called him as one of the, his fellow learner. And he, he, he understood clearly well what it is, what it takes to stand on God's promises. That we are to become part of his divine nature. And how do we do that? Is to begin to read his words, study his words, and let them become a part of us. Amen? And that flows through knowledge. Knowledge. When we begin to acquire knowledge, the knowledge of him, then we will be in a better position to understand and carry out our Christian duties. Amen. Okay. He talks about we can become partakers and there's something that we need to do as well. We need to escape the corruption that is in this world by loss. By the kind of desires that are not at godliness. Because loss here is the desire for something, strong desire for something. So we need to shift from the things that are not leading us unto the godly nature of our Lord Jesus Christ. I really believe that God wants us to be different so we can, people can look at us and be drawn to Him. I remember in the, in the one man preached one message and 
5,000 souls got saved. It was because of the man who preached the message. It was because of Christ who was in the man who preached the message. Am I right? And so I believe that Christ wants to dwell in us the very same way. You know, that's why he wants to give us, we want us to become a part of his divine nature. He has given us that right. He has given us that right. And we, want, we need to partake of that even in this time when things seem to be going upside down. Those who never start, better start. Because I'm here to announce to you that it's not getting better. Anybody think we're coming back to normal? Let me see your hand. It's not getting better. So we need to be a part of this divine nature so that we know nothing can rock our boats. Nothing will be able to rock our boats. And so there are some things we need to escape, as I said before. The corruption of this world and the lust that it carries. Now listen to the advice he gives in verse 5. I will be with you. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Virtue here means moral excellence. So when we start adding to our faith, there are a number of persons who are saved from many, many years. And they are just at saving station. I'm talking general now. I'm not talking about this congregation. General now. And they are just at saving station. They don't have nothing to their faith. Absolute nothing. But we are advised here to add virtue. So we can become excellence before God. And to virtue we need to have what? Knowledge. And knowledge is a wonderful thing. I want to say something here to us. A number of things that prayer is a wonderful thing. I have nothing against prayer. But a number of things we go to God on our knees for. If we were knowledgeable, we wouldn't do that. If we had the knowledge as to how to get across with it, we wouldn't do that. Are you with me? Wow. Wow. I remember, I remember, Joshua was a man of God and God called him to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. And there was a time when they went out to war. While they got out, they realized that, you know, the enemy overcoming them. Joshua get on his face and lay down and start to praise God. God said, get up, man, get up. The search count. This is not a prayer thing. Yes. <laughs> a prayer. This is not a good prayer. Yes. Get up one on the search account. Yes. You know, after he went on his search account, he found out what was the problem. Yes. And he had a solution as well. Yes. He didn't only find the problem, you know. But he put a hand to the problem. He found that Achan was one of those persons who stole the Babylonian garment when they went over into Jericho. And God told them that that should not be carried from over there. We don't want them from over there. Yeah. Yeah. We don't need it. But Achan was the man who decided to take something with him yeah. and bury it in his tent. Yeah. And God's problem by Israel. But we can't afford to take up fear and a curse thing and sinful behavior like the world doing and running around like endless chicken. Yes. No, we trust God. Amen. Praise God. We gotta trust Him. Amen. And when it looks like I'm not working for us, we still need to trust Him. Yes. We cannot be carried away with the wind of all kinds of different things. Yeah. No. If we do that, then we can't stand. Yeah. We're not knowledgeable as to what is happening. Because Jesus tells us about these days. Um, Paul wrote about it to 
to Timothy as well. In the last days, perilous time shall come. Amen. We talk about it a lot. I want to prepare for it. My God. Oh God. Is this something that a lot of us know? Yeah. Am I right? But as we have the title, we can stand on God's promises. We are well able to do that. So he said besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, add to virtue and knowledge. That's a part of God's promise, you know. Add to virtue and knowledge. Hallelujah. And he didn't talk, stop there. He said, unto knowledge, temperance. Do you know what is temperance? Self-control. And some of us are standing on God's promises and we're out of control. We're still claiming that we're standing on God's promises. We're still out of control. We don't learn to control the things we do and the things we say. And our actions. When trials and tests and tribulations. Our actions are different. Am I right? Yeah. No. But we need to be able to add to our faith, knowledge. When you are knowledgeable of a thing, certain things don't take you by surprise and drag you into fear, right? Yeah. And when you are in control, or God is in control of your life, you know, I'm going to say something here. Cell phones are wonderful. It's a wonderful invention, right? But did we know that average of the time we spent on the cell phone, especially on book face? Did I pronounce it right? Oh. Instagram. Instagram. Oh. Wara Wara Instagram. That's up, okay. Do you know that we have given much time to those um, apps on our phone that we give to God? And that can become a big problem? Amen. Oh gosh. We are Lord in our church. That is the truth. Instagram is on. Oh, I didn't talk about the tactic. You see, I don't know what I'm doing. You see, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And there are so many things to distract you from the knowledge of the Lord. And the knowledge of God can only be found in His Word. You can't find it nowhere else. You're going to search your whole way out. That's why he provided us this manual over many years and preserve it, which is called the Bible. So we can have it. And so we need to be more serious about our salvation and reaching people for God. Because a lot of people are contemplating suicide because of what is happening here. My God. We are standing in that God promise though. Yeah. Standing on God's promises mean we need to reach people as well so they can come and stand on God's promises as well. Yeah. That's a part of it. Yeah. So we are advised to get ourselves in control and also patient. We need to have patient man. A lot of us have been serving God for a long time and our patient patient level is very, very low. Very, very low. Anybody can attest to that? Our patient level is very low. And you know what we use in most time when things happen? We use anger. 
when things like we just our anger just bursts out. And sometimes we throw it out on the picnic, you see? Ramp with the nuts and the nuts Throw it out on the children, then we don't give them some big egg. And I don't know, you want to beat up, you know? And my husband will tell you how to talk the road work. And disrespect you, and give you a hand, bro. But you can't do it. Just get it out. Right, sis? Human beings will do that. But we need to be patient. Jesus did that while he was at the cross. Not only at the cross, right through his life on the planet Earth, he did that. He had patience. And so if we're going to stand on the promises of God, we need patience. And this here means perseverance. You have to persevere through. Sometimes Satan sends some people with some things to come say to you, you know. To squeeze the patient, you know. And if you don't think about it, you know, you get upset, you know. And you cuss and swear and dry your sword like Peter, you know. Amen? And if you cut high priest ears off if it's necessary. Because when a person is hungry, you don't look for the best thing to do or to say. Your reaction is not that you want to bless people when they are hungry. Come, sister, I'm hungry with you. Let, let us pray. Come, sister, the Lord bless you because I'm very hungry. We don't do that. Hey, brother, come over here, man. I'm very hungry with you. Let's read two scriptures and get this over. We don't do that. No. It is in us to do something the opposite. That's, that, that's natural human reaction, right? It is. But we are asked to be perseverance in everything, everything possible. Let us be patient. And after that, he said we should show kindness, brotherly kindness. Speak about charity. And all of these things that we are saying is not that you don't know them enough, but I just want to encourage us. I just want to remind us that sometimes there are them, you know, we just put them aside a little bit and we just carry on into something totally different. I am guilty, yeah. I am. I don't know if anybody is, but I'm guilty. Sometimes I just brush them aside. But when I was going through it, I said, My God, thank you, because if it's not your mercy, I don't know what I've done. It is, it, is, it is just the mercy of God. You know? So I tell people I'm not my own. I belong to Him. Let's look at verse 8. For these things, if these things be in you, this is the benefit of having all that we mentioned about. Having patience, having knowledge, having virtue, godliness, temperance, which is self-control. If these things be the text is about, but it's the same word as remain. They make you that you shall not be barren. Barren. They make you that you shall not become idle. Are we active? When you have something inside of you, you don't forget it. You can't stay home now. You can't stay home. And actually, everybody you meet, you want to pick a conversation with them about that. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Anybody just want to tell them about the love of Jesus? But yeah. Jesus died on the cross and he saved you and he's coming back for you. Yeah. You just want to say something about him. Because it's inside of you. You know? You're not idle. The word barren here means So we don't want to become an inactive person. Because if we, if we become inactive, what the there's a saying in Jamaica that devil find work to give idle hands, right? Yeah. And we don't want the devil to use us like we don't belong to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And he also talks about 
in the same verse. Let's read it right through together. Let us read the verse together, please. I think we need to do this. Verse 8. One, two, three. For if these things be in you and above, they make you that you shall neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge. Do you understand what we just read? If the, if, the, if the upper characteristic that we just talked about in the previous verses be in you, there's no place for you to hide. So sometimes we can't understand our Christian fight time to go over people who are not frackers in the matter. Not about God. Amen. Not about the Holy Spirit. Amen. But about some different things. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. And sometimes from one conversation, just a machine. I'm going to tell you this, but are you first man telling me? I'm going to tell you nobody else. Huh? Gossip. Gossip. We need to be aware of these things. And stay away from them. Right, Sister Becky? Yeah, man, these are some of the things that cause us not to be fruitful in God. Because when we should be talking in life, we're talking nonsense. And for some people, you know, Sister Beckford, when you come to church, while the message is going on, it's the best time people find to sleep, you know. The devil is a liar. Yeah, some people never get a good sleep until they come to church and message going on. Because they don't want them to be transformed. And when they know them five people are landing cool, are you cool? And are you cool, you must speak the word of God. But now when they know your feet, you don't want you're not a recipient. You don't want to receive it. Because if not, don't pack it up and make sure you come home. Like we come back with your fire and the light up all this. Amen. Amen, sister. Amen. Amen. The best things going on that is trying to teach you, to instruct you in the word of God. And people find time to sleep. And if you hear the dollar, you are gonna find something else for you. I'm sorry if you were at home. You find something else to do. You'll be sleeping. And perfect to you will be reading by the night. Or singing a hymn. No. But the things, you know the devil is a liar. The things that will help you know. He tried to find destructive things to pull that away from you. you know. um, a lot of times we're not at all alert enough to know that this is what is happening now. Because the Bible speaks that the word of God is powerful. Real powerful. Power pack. And also sharper than any two-edged sword. So how could we fall asleep while the word of God? The devil is a liar. You came in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's get back to the text. So, as we examine verse 9, it says here, But he that looketh at these things is blind. You see where the danger comes in? The reward is in verse 8, and the danger is in 9. Alright, um, just a bit further. Do me a favor, go to the back of the church. The back door, let's go to the back door. Quickly, quickly, please. I like the size of your Bible. Okay. I want you to keep your two hands at your side. Close your eyes. Just pretend that you're blind and come to me. Just reach me up here, sir. Close your eyes. Don't touch anything. 
Close your eyes. You see what happened? I'm just demonstrating something where we become blind, you know. You saw what happened? Keep coming. Yes, you're going well. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Keep coming. You see, what, you see what is happening because she's blind? She carefully chooses her steps because she doesn't know where she has go. Look at that. Keep coming, sister, my friend. Keep coming. And you can see the doubt on her because she doesn't know where she has go. She doesn't have no sense of direction. Do you want to reach me, sister, my friend? I said you are to reach me. Come to me. Yeah, come to me. Close your eyes. Don't open your eyes. Come to me. I said you're not to feel anything because you're lying. Don't feel anything. Come to me. Just, well, you not feeling anything to me. Just come to me. Come to me. <laughs> you can't come. Because you're blind. And the next time you to come this far, right? Because you're blind. Anyway, thank you very much. You can close your eyes and come back to your seat. Now, this is the difficulty of being blind. You see, the amount that things she left from there to come here, the first thing she bumped into her chair. Because she's blind. What does it feel like to be blind? A number of opportunities are taken away from you when you are blind. Am I right? Amen. And this is what the knowledge. The virtue and the uh, sharing into God's nature, divine nature. We fall and we trip and we have a difficult time finding our way. So Peter was advising the people, but he that lock these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And I've forgotten that he was purged from his sins, his own sins. Let us not fall into that category, believers. But let us also be careful to acquire knowledge, to know more about Christ. And not just to know. Sometimes we claim that we know him and it's just that we just know about him. You know? Knowing about him is different from knowing him. Wow. Am I right? Yeah. Come on. You can't know about that thing, you know. You must, you know, must know the thing, you know, because you can't read about it and say, yeah, oh, it's an iPhone. Yeah, man, and Steve, Steve Jobs who responds to Obama came Yeah, but you don't know Steve Jobs. You've never seen it. You know what I'm saying? So you can't know about the phone, but you don't know the maker. We can't know about the Bible, but we don't know the Lord of the Bible, Lord of the God of the Bible. So he said, let me do this again, please. And I'm closing. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And he also is one that is fucked up. His memory, he has memory lost. That he was purged from his whole sin. And he's a part of God's divine nature. Wherefore, rather, virgin, verse 10. Make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Oh, God. Let's read this together. I'm, I'm closing. Verse 10. Let's read it together. I'm just think about the words. We're going to read it slowly together. Verse 10.
No, but the, it is the upper class we're coming from, you know, with the, the, uh, the characteristics that describe you. Add to your faith knowledge, and the knowledge uh, virtue, the virtue temperance. Mm. Yeah. And he concludes, if you do these things, you will never fall, fear or fall or drop. No, you can't. It's how serious it is. Well, let me hope that I have encouraged your hearts and you have learned something and you can go home and meditate on it. I'm sure I guarantee it will be a difference in your life if, you, if we start doing all of these things. You are a very good audience, well behaved, and so I thank God for you and I pray that the Spirit of God will rest remain and abide with you upon you and your children and your children's children. And just about everyone, you know, because we have a short time on this planet, God. Hell is real and hell is coming up. It's getting near. Who could have told us that 2020? If you can I just can you give me just two more minutes to say something? Please. <laughs> Who could have told us in our wildest dream that 2020 would turn out like this? A number of us make different plans for 2020. Am I right? And it turns out to be something different. No. I listen to a number of, 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 of clergy persons who talk about what 2020 would be like. And when I look at the clips and I listen to them, I say, oh my God. If only did you know. <laughs> if only did you know. You would have said this to the people. I remember one vividly where the minister was ministering our pulpit and he was saying to the people that their bill falling 2020 won't be empty. I remember that vividly. And the people jump and shout and then carry on. Out. And shortly after. There was a pandemic hit us. I wonder what is he saying to the people now? I wonder. We have to be careful. We need to stay to the word of the Lord and rightly divide it in truth. You see, like how me just take me a little time and try to encourage our hearts. Many people not doing that. They're not doing that. For some unknown reason, they're not doing that. i tell you something. What I discover over my years of following the Lord is that you see, if you want to get Christians hype up, you can't do that. By saying the things that they need to hear. You can't do that. And if that doesn't necessarily have to be coming from the word of God. We just need to speak to the believer what they want to hear. And you can just leave the truth. And you can have them going all over the place. I honestly to God that I will time and place, but I don't want to do that. I want to take my time, speak to you clearly so you can understand what I'm saying and what the word of God is saying. And you can apply them. The funny thing about that is that when you're in a classroom sitting an exam, the only person who makes the noise in the classroom is who? Who is it that makes the noise in the classroom? It has to be the instructor. It can't be the student. The student are here to learn or sit an exam and, to, and you can't learn by distractions. So I recognize over the many years that we have become, many of us have become 
very destructive, very. But brothers and sisters, I'm not feathering my own this, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying to you that Jesus took the people, sit them down and he taught them the word. Make sure that they get it. That's why Peter was so effective on the day of Pentecost. He made sure he taught them. And so we have to be effective too. And light up this place, the entire greater and beyond. With the word of God. Because we are what? Light. Anywhere light like going, what it does? It reflects. No matter how dark this room is, you know. The darkness can't talk to the light when you touch one of that switch, you know. Everywhere become what? Lit it up. Yeah? He also said we are the salt of this earth. Am I right? And anything you put salt into, as long as you apply it, it changes the taste of it. Right? I want to ask us, what taste are we changing today? Our taste are we changing with the salt that is given to us? What darkness are we lighting up with the light that Christ has in place in our hands? Think about that. The Lord bless you. Glory to God. We thank God for Deacon Williams who brought the words so, so timely and being so interesting in what he was, he was saying. And when I observed his words, I realized that there, there are a lot of things that he spoke and I believe each and, of, each and every one of us can choose to take from it because a lot was said. And uh, one of the things that came home to me, I realized that we need to have an anchor in Christ Jesus because with what is going on now and all that is happening I realize that for us to endure we have to be rooted and grounded and uh, I believe that as the songwriter say in times like these we need a savior in times like these we need a anchor. Be very sure your anchor hold and grip the solid rock. So I pray that God will continue to bless you, Deacon Williams. You will continue to be an inspiration. You will continue to impart the words of God to others and you too will so continue to live that when the Lord return, you too will be in his wonderful kingdom. So to close this part of service, we'll all stand. We'll turn our hands to number 339. It says, say, have a pile of tea. Sometimes when my faith would falter and no sunshine I can see, I just lift my eyes to Jesus and I whisper, pile of me. You know, stand.
audience, we will come back and we uh, will pray to those and pray for the congregation. stretch your arms out wide open and call us come and to be all those who are labor our every lady you have rest for our souls and with this love we use the opportunity to, to say thanks to you we want to praise you for all that you have been done doing and all that you have already done and that which you will do in the future We stand on the behalf of your people, Lord, who are becoming fearful because of the different things that are happening on the planet. We have a God who we can trust, who we can stand on your promises. We remember, Lord, that you have promised Abraham a son and Sarah a son as well. In their old age. Okay. And Lord, you did deliver. And so it's no hard thing for you to do. I've said you help us to allow our lights to shine wherever we go. Allow us to be the one that affects the different ones whom we will come in contact with and not them affecting us with anything. Because we carry around the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit in our lives. Amen. Lord, we ask that the ones that are above us that are feeling ill, of any type, Lord, we know that they are the balm in Gilead. Amen. And there's nothing too hard for you to do. So we ask right now, Lord, that you touch the headache, the pain in the arm, the pain in the back, the pain in the chest, pain in the hip, Lord, the pain in the leg. And most of all, Lord, we transform the hearts that are wondering and pondering what next. Because you are our portion. And so, Lord, help us to just stay confident again. Those confidence that have been shaken. Those confidence that have been wrecked. Repair them again, Lord. And replace your goodness, your grace, your mercy again. To the hearts of your people. Touch on a night, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit. We know you can. You have done it already and you will continue to do so. We pray for those who are having different thoughts, those who can't sleep at nights because of fear. Grant them your divine presence and your comfort, Lord, that they will be able to rest well. Lord, you make night for us to rest and not for us to be troubled in our sleep and crying and wandering and pondering all over the place. Give them sweet sleep and sweet rest. Good vision, Lord. All who those who go to bed and been dreaming all kind of nonsense, Lord. Change that around. And help the Lord to see you high and lifted up like Isaiah saw you. Yes. And you strength fill the temple. Yes. Hear us, O Lord, and grant us your mercies once again. Touch the leaders of this congregation and just those of, all, of everyone. Not just the leaders, Lord. But everyone. 
We all need you, Lord. None of us are able to live without you, live without your presence. So I ask God that you would give us your comprehensive blessing. Even though we're not deserving, we are. But you always look beyond us. Yes, you're that kind of God. You always make sure you take care of the needs of your people. Because nothing is too hard or difficult for you. And for our minds and our hearts to come back, Lord, into the right place, to function like we are to, that like we were created to. And let not our hearts be troubled, Lord, because we know that all things work together for good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. So bless us, dismiss us with your blessing, Lord, your choices blessing. And as we go, Father, we pray, Lord, that you bless the food, bless the hand that handle the food. You have the strength and that the food will serve its intended purpose to our bodies. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen.